what's up? You know that silly mood that you get into sometimes where you wanna take half of a weekend day and about 60 to 70 bucks and exchange it for a good tasting sandwich? You know that mood? Today, I'm gonna show you how to capitalize on it by showing you how to make one of the world's most hyper palatable sandwiches, the roast beef and cheddar. To get started, we'll need to make the salty sweet caramelized onion roll. For that, I'll combine 100 grams of warm water, six grams of instant yeast, 35 grams of sugar, one large egg yolk, 35 grams of melted butter, 75 grams of mashed potato, seven grams of dough conditioner. For more details on why I'm using this, I'll link to my perfect bun video in the description, along with a link to buy this dough conditioner if you need it. Next, in goes 315 grams of all-purpose flour and then six grams of salt. Next, the dough hook goes on and I'll mix this on medium speed for about eight minutes. And once the dough is strengthened and clearing the bowl like this, I'll flip it into a medium bowl and then round it into a ball with a little bit of tension. By the way, this is a six roll batch and it's easily doubled if you wanna make 12 and freeze some for future use sandwich pleasures. Next, a lid goes on the bowl and I'll ferment this for 90 minutes in a warm spot. For me, that's usually my oven. I turned it on for two minutes and then killed the heat and now it's about 90F in there. 90 minutes later, this dough has grown by about two and a half times and it's looking nice and buoyant. So I'll divide it into six pieces that are about 100 grams a piece. Then I'll shape it. To do that, I'll degas it, then fold in the sides and then roll on to those seams. From there, I'll use my fingertips and palm to round it into a tidy little ball with some tension in it. Once I've got all six of these pieces balled up, I'll cover the whole lot with another half sheet tray and then proof it in a warm place. Again, that's my oven because today it's like 66 degrees in my house and that really slows down yeast activity. Next, let's make the caramelized onions to go on top of these things. For that, I'll small dice one medium sweet onion. I'm using Vidalia here because I find that those caramelize the fastest. Then into a medium heat saute pan, I'll add a little squiggle of olive oil, the onions, a pinch of salt, a pinch of sugar, and then about a quarter cup of water. I'm first gonna simmer these onions to soften them a little bit. That's gonna help them caramelize faster and a lot more evenly. Two to three minutes later, after a hard simmer and the water is cooked off, I'll come back and scrape these up and then saute them for four to five more minutes over medium heat or until the onions are taken on some light browning like this. From there, I'll deglaze this with a little bit more water, maybe three tablespoons worth. That's gonna help me get any of the brown bits that are stuck to the pan into the onions. And once that water is reduced, I'm gonna stir and saute this for another four to five while keeping the onions moving constantly. That way they won't burn or get over caramelized. And after about 15 minutes in total, I've got some medium level caramelization going on and I'll call these good. For now, I'm gonna set these aside to cool and check back on my proofing buns. It's been about 45 to 60 minutes at this point, and as you can see, these are well-proofed and have more than doubled in size. The combo of dough conditioner and the eight minute long mix gave us plenty of strength to allow an aggressive proof here. Don't be shy on letting these gas up. Next, I'll give all six of these little BBs a quick brush with some egg wash, and then I'll top them with about a tablespoon of my cooled caramelized onions. Do your best to spread these out on top without degassing it too much. That can be kind of tricky. Next, I'll add on a strong pinch of poppy seeds and then a two to three finger pinch of flaky sea salt. This combo is gonna give these buns Bialy vibes. By the way, should I make a Bialy video? Let me know in the comments. Next, I'll load these into a 400F oven and bake them for 15 to 17 minutes. Time lapse. And after 15 minutes, these are looking good, so I'll pull them out. As you can see, these are well browned, but very soft. They've got an oniony sweetness, pops of salty, and they got that hot dog bun poppy seed thing that I like. For now, I'm gonna set them aside and then preheat my oven to its highest setting. That's like 550F, but 475 or 500 would also work. Then I'll grab some beef. Today, I've got an eight pound top round roast. It's from the top half of the back half of the cow. It tastes pretty beefy and it's semi lean. To prep it for the oven, I'll drizzle both sides liberally with some olive oil and then wipe that all over. Next, I'll lay down a sheet of foil under the wire rack to both make cleanup easier and prevent smoking during the roast. And then finally, I'll very liberally salt and pepper both sides of this roast. Do not be shy with the salt. This meat is only being seasoned on the outside and that salty crust is gonna help season the interior of the meat once it's all sliced up and piled high on the sandwich. And once I've got this roast crusted up with salt and pepper, I'll load it into my ripping hot oven to sear the outside for 15 to 20 minutes. By the way, if you've got convection on your oven, that would be very useful here. That hot, dry circulating air makes for an even better sear. 20 minutes later, this beef is all sizzled up on the outside. So I'll take it out of the oven to cool it off and then I'll turn my oven down to 
to 275F, and then I'll prop the door for a while so that it drops more quickly. In total, I'll give the roast and the oven about 10 minutes to chill out. Next, I'll load this meat back into the lower temp oven to slow roast it for another two hours or so. Plenty of time for me to brush up on my Espanol from the sponsor of this video, Babbel, one of the top language learning apps in the world. Later this year, Lauren and I are going to Spain to eat all their food and drink their spicy wines. But unfortunately, since I left the restaurant industry a few years ago, my conversational Spanish has really taken a hit. So I've been using Babbel over the last couple weeks to brush up and learn some new phrases. Me siento muy feliz porque me gusta México. There's also fun games in the app like Phrase Maze. Ooh, baby! It's basically Zelda, but instead of solving puzzles, you're answering questions in Spanish. The thing that I love about Babbel is that the lessons are designed by real language teachers and you learn in real world conversations. So you're actually equipped to have practical convos. Kind of like the way I learned in the restaurant, just with less focus on swearing and people's penis size. <laughs> so to start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks or to brush up on a language that you already know, click the link in my description or scan this QR code to get 60% off your subscription. Thank you, Babbel. Let's quickly make a tangy, zippy sauce to bring some acidity to this very rich sandwich. It's Arby sauce. We're making Arby sauce. To make it, I'll combine 100 grams of water, 125 grams of the mother sauce, ketchup, then 15 grams of steak sauce, 10 grams of brown sugar, 10 grams of hot sauce, 15 grams of white distilled vinegar, two grams of onion powder, two grams of garlic powder, two grams of black pepper, and then three grams of salt. Next, I'll drop in my immersion blender and then spin everything to combine. Of course, a whisk or a spoon would also do here, but I like to use a blender to make sure that the onion and garlic powders are evenly dissolved. They can get kind of clumpy when you just stir them. And that's a perfect sauce to pair with juicy beef and gooey cheese sauce. It brings a little bit of sweet with some acidity and it's got a little bite from the black pepper and the steak sauce. Obviously making your own is gonna be way better than using the stuff that comes in the packet. That stuff is mainly corn syrup and tomato paste. Back at the oven, it's been about two hours and now it's time to check this beef's internal temp. I like to shoot for a low medium or high medium rare. So 129 to 130 F is my ideal temp. Next, I'll pull this out and rest it for at least 30 minutes before I cut it. This meat is still very much in its cooking phase. And if we cut into it now, we'd have an overcooked edge and an undercooked middle. Resting allows the internal temp to equalize. So I'm going to set this off to the side to let this roast do just that while I make my gooey cheese sauce. For that, I'll grab a medium bowl and into it combine 225 grams of cheddar cheese. I'm using a medium sharp cheddar here, by the way, and I opted to grate it myself on the largest holes of my box grater to avoid any weird anti-caking agents that might screw up the thickening of my sauce. Extra sharp cheddars can work, but for this recipe, I think the result would be too sharp and too flavorful and cover up the beef flavor. On top of that, I'll add an eight gram of cornstarch and then toss everything to combine. This cornstarch is going to act as a buffer between liquid and cheese during the melting phase and help keep the proteins and the cheese from linking up and coagulating, making a grainy broken sauce. Next up, my dusted cheese goes into a medium saute pan. Then I'll add in 250 grams of evaporated milk. From there, I'll move this over to the stove and heat it over very low heat. If you go too hot here, this cheese will brown in the pan and that will make a lumpy, yucky sauce. Now I'll just jump in and stir that to combine and then slowly melt it for about five minutes. This method is way easier and faster, in my opinion, than making a roux and a bechamel, and it tends to be more concentrated in terms of cheese flavor. The one downside here is that it firms up pretty quickly once it cools, so you'll need to keep it warm. And once this mixture hits a low simmer, the starch in it will start to swell and thicken things even more. So we'll need to give it a stir here to make sure that it's not too thick and that nothing scorches, and we'll need to assess whether or not we need to add a few more splashes of evap to thin it out. Mine has a pretty thick viscosity, but it's still pourable and saucy, so I'll call it good. Now, to build this sandwich, I'll give my onion roll a quick fry in butter to make sure that it's crispy and toasty on the inside, and then I'll cut into that roast beef. For that, I'm using my sharpest knife. This is technically called a slicer because it's designed to cut things as thin as possible, which is actually the main challenge of making a sandwich like this at home. Oh my God, look at this roast beef. It's so rosy and so juicy. That's thanks to that long rest. To cut it, or should I say to shave it, I'm gonna gently press the blade of this knife against the flat of the roast and take off whatever comes off. I'm not trying to create perfectly thin slices top to bottom here because by hand, that is literally impossible. This roast is soft and tall and putting pressure on it deforms it, making slicing it 
very difficult. What's important here is not the size or shape of the pieces, but the thickness. This sandwich just doesn't work with thick steaky beef because this cut of beef is too chewy once it's over about an eighth of an inch thick. And if you're not confident that you can approximate this shaving move, another option is to cut the roast into smaller pieces that aren't so tall or thick and slice it like you would a steak, but as thin as you can. This minimizes the squishiness that deforms the meat, making the slicing so much harder, but these slices will be thicker on average than the shave stuff, so you probably don't want a whole sandwich made up of them. To compare both methods, I've got the shave stuff on the left and the steaky sliced stuff on the right. Again, whatever you decide, thinness is by far the most important factor. Now to put it all together, I'll take my toasted bun and then add a little squizzle of my tangy sauce on the bottom. Behind that, I'll drop on four to five ounces of my tissue paper thin shaved hot beef, and then a few of the steaky slices to bring some more of that salty, crusty exterior. And I'll finish with a few large spoonfuls of my gooey, melty cheddar cheese sauce. I'll top it with a toasty, buttery bun, and then give it all a squish. You guys, this sandwich is the definition of hyper palatable. The beef is so freaking juicy and soft and luscious, and the cheese sauce is sharp, fatty, and lubes everything up. And oh my God, the bun. That's the best part. It pops you with salt, then sweet, savory onion, and it's so mm. squishy. If you guys want a fun food project with a mucho rewarding result, please treat yourself to this sometime soon. Let's eat this thing. <laughs>